You see how nice my posse is coming in? Happy Sunday. You got me nice and early today. Who's up? Happy Sunday. I started to just fry up onions. I'm going to use some of these onions in my sauce and also some onions in my meatballs. Happy Sunday. What's everyone doing? Happy Sunday. This is some leftover Italian bread I have. I'm going to just rip it up and soak it with some cream for my meatballs instead of um, breadcrumb. These, this makes your meatballs super tender. So I'm just doing little pieces. Fida, don't shush her. <laughs> you can go in mommy's room if you want. They're right next to each other. We're making meatballs. So the first thing we do is just rip this bread apart and I'm gonna soak it because I want it to get nice and like moist. Perfect day for a walk, it's beautiful out. Beautiful, good morning from Kentucky. Where's everyone from right now? Good morning from New Jersey. <laughs> Honestly, I even said to my husband today, I said, you know, I need to start spending more time with Fina like outside, like, you know, like outside of the house because we do stuff inside, but I feel like lately Marielle is a little more yappy and she probably wants like a little break from it too. You know, I totally get it. I think this is enough because I only have a pound of meat. Delaware, up, upstate, Cleveland, Georgia, Long Island, Ireland. What time is it in Ireland? Queens, New York, Boston. This is so dope, guys. Like, how cool. Literally all over the place. Iowa, Connecticut, California. I need to know what time it is in Ireland. <laughs> that is so cool. I'm using cream. You could use milk if you want. I just, I have this, like, little bit of lingering cream I need to get rid of. Now I'm gonna go in with the milk. You just wanna like moisten this up a little bit. That's good. And this is gonna turn into like a wet paste, almost like a glue instead of breadcrumb. Thank you for the gifts, guys. New Brunswick right near you. Oh, New Brunswick is a cool little town over there. It's a cool little town. Dublin Island, Japan. Is that like a fact? Do I believe you? <laughs> All right, you see what this looks like? As it sits, it's gonna get nice and moist. I'm gonna be baking my meatballs just cause it's a little bit like less maintenance and I'm not trying to destroy my stove. Um, and then I'll, you know, finish them off in the sauce. If I was gonna fry up meatballs, then like that would be the dinner, the fried meatballs. You know, like you fry them to a crisp and cook them fully. Um, but if I'm cooking it in the sauce, I'm just going to pot cook it in the oven and then plop them in. My favorite pizza place in New Jersey. I don't know. I did go to, when I filmed for the, um, Johnny Drinks podcast, I did have pizza at this Italian restaurant that was like, so good, thin, crispy, delicious. But I'm going to tell you, I don't think I've tried enough pizza places. So maybe me, me, maybe me and my husband will do like a pizza tour this summer. What do you think, babe? I would love to. I know you would. But it has to be just New Jersey. Yeah. And I think that would be pretty dope, actually. We should totally do that. So the bread and milk mixture, it like almost turns into a paste 
and I don't use breadcrumbs. This is your binder. It does make the meatballs very tender, in my opinion. The meatball, the breadcrumb, I think, like tightens up your meatballs. And this is bread soaked in fat, essentially. So as the meatballs cook, the fat like tenderizes the meat. I'm gonna put these onions in a bowl and I'm gonna use this for the start of my sauce and also for some of my meatball. So normally I'll just use like the sweet Italian sausage, but I have um, like a pork ring from Lavodi. I'm gonna just use that. So I'm gonna just like fry it up. But I am gonna fry it in the bottom of my saucepan to just get like a little bit of the flavor in there. And then I'll take it out, I'll take the wood out, I'll cut it, and then I'll put it in the sauce later. Just how I would do any other, you know, sauces. This is some olive oil, so I made confit garlic. I did record, I just didn't get a chance to post, but I'm sure you've seen that, you know? I've also shared it a ton of times. Um, I separated the garlic from the oil, so I'm gonna put, here I'm gonna be using the garlic and the oil, but sometimes I just use the garlic or I just use the oil, and I do think it stores nicer separately. If you keep it together, the oil just gets all congealed on the garlic. This gets you like more use out of the oil. This is just olive oil. I'm doing like two or three tablespoons. <clears throat> And then this is a provolone and parsley pork sausage ring. It's like basically the same as a sweet Italian sausage, maybe a little more cheese. So I'm gonna fry it up and then um, we'll cut it up and throw it in the sauce later. It does have wood in here. So, you know, make sure you take that out. <laughs> So I'm gonna fry that up while we start our meatballs and then I'll take that out and we'll start our sauce. So I'm actually not putting tomato paste in my sauce. I'm not a huge fan of tomato paste. That's if like, if I'm making like a really big meat sauce, you know, if I got company over a holiday, I'll put the tomato paste. But if it's us, I prefer like a sauce without the paste. I'm just not like a, I just feel like sometimes it's a little too bitter and I think it's a little more like fresca without it. So I'm not doing the sausage, I mean the tomato paste. The sausage, if you ever get those pork sausage rings, there's wood skewers in them that keeps them together. Did you know that? So after you cook them, you have to take the skewers off and then you slice them up. You know, I'm gonna make my ice coffee. This is just, um, I don't know which Nespresso pod, but one of them. Hi, baby. I'm using tomato puree today. Um, can't wait till I get my garden tomatoes and just make fresh sauce all summer. I have an abundance of coconut milk right now. This is canned coconut milk, unsweetened or anything. I like to use it as coffee creamer sometimes. Have you guys ever done that? It even it even like whips up really nicely. You could put it in the microwave. No, you have to try it. It's so good. And it, like, if you want something a little like different, you know, it like makes your coffee a little thick. Sometimes it has those little like, you know, congealed coconut. That's just the fat cold on the ice. So don't lose your shit. You know, it's not curdled milk. It just happens. Just gives it like a little coconut ting, you know, it doesn't have any sugar or anything. So it's not going to make it sweet. It's more like a velvety mouthfeel. You know, when you have an abundance of something, you will find use for it. I'm also going to put my oven on like 425-ish because I want to get these meatballs nice and like browned up in there.
And then I also have a baking sheet with just some parchment paper. This is, it's called Italian Bistro. It's really just like the beef, pork, and veal mix. So it's, um, a, this is 1.44 pounds, equal parts beef, pork, and veal. Honestly, I'm using this because I have it. Sometimes I'll just use ground pork. I mean, sometimes I'll just use ground beef. Sometimes I'll use ground beef and ground pork because it's more accessible. You know, just how I'm feeling that day. My husband was a chopper yesterday and I'm like, you know, see if they have that mix because they don't always have it. I wasn't going to the pork store. My daughter, Serafina, has a birthday party soon, so that's why I'm gonna hop off and come back on after. Um, it's, it's beautiful out, so. They're hanging around, enjoying their Sunday. I like how it's like nice and tender too, like it's not all in a bowl, you know? I kind of just spread it out a little bit so you can season it evenly without having to play with it so much. And you want to like make sure it's very moist before you put it in. All right, let's start with some parsley. Sunday dinner. I'm making meatballs. My husband loves meatballs. Serafina loves bread sauce. But I think the truth, I don't make it every Sunday because I don't know. I mean, who wants spaghetti and meatballs every Sunday? I don't know. Definitely not me. I grew up, my grandmother would make a pasta for my for my grandpa. Like he he needed a pasta, not even Sunday. Every night he needed some sort of pasta. Even if it was like a garlic and oil. She would just fry up anchovies with like garlic and oil and that was like a pasta side dish. She needed a pasta. I mean, I loved it, but maybe that's why now I don't really make a ton of pasta. I do enjoy it. I mean, who doesn't like a nice bowl of pasta? And then, you know, growing up when they made the sauce on Sunday, they would cook with it all week or it'd go in the freezer and then you'd have it two weeks ago. You'd have it two weeks later, the same sauce that they made two weeks ago, you know, which is great. But I like to cook. So for me to have a reason to cook, I love that. All right, parsley. First ingredient. Salt. This is garlic powder. This was garlic powder and onion powder. I had like the same amount of each and I mixed it. And then I also wrote and garlic on it because I would never remember that. <laughs> I just got my hair glazed. So every once in a while I'll just go and they do like a conditioner treatment to it or they, uh, whatever a glaze is. It's not like a dye, it just pulls your color through. So this is like season when you're hot, you know? some black pepper. Um, I mean, this is what my hair normally is. My color is probably like a little bit of a lighter brown, but I've been dyeing my hair this color for years. Before I was this, I was blue black, which I really, really loved. Like I would go back blue back tomorrow, but I have to be tan and I can't. I just can't be that person anymore. <laughs> I used to dye my hair this color, like when the sun hit it, it was like almost blue. I loved it. But it doesn't look good on like, you know, you have to have a nice olivey tan skin. Grated cheese. 
you know, I'd say like a cup of grated cheese, guys. Meatballs have grated cheese in them. Okay? Grated cheese. Oh, look, these are my sun-dried tomatoes. I just took them out because I want to eat them for like lunch, maybe on some egg. But um, they get congealed from sitting in the fridge. You want to make sure you take them out like probably a half hour before you want to eat them. All right, we're going to put our bread mixture in there. See how it's like literally a paste now? And then this is a scoop of fried onions. Do a little more. I like to fry the onion. I don't think the raw onion like cooks the way I want it to. I want it to be nice and tender and buttery before I put it in the raw meat. And then this is some um, comfy garlic. I'm gonna actually get a different cutting board for this. I'm just destroying my cutting board. I keep these like little different size wood or these little plastic ones for fruit and like shit like this that you don't feel like destroying your board so early in the game, you know? So I'm using this comfy garlic in it because it's just what I have made right now, but you could, you know, regular garlic is fine. So I use regular raw garlic all the time. Just gonna like chop it up a little bit. This stuff is so good. Like you literally can just toast bread and spread it on the bread. You can, base of a salad dressing. It just gives so much flavor to whatever you're cooking. And it is so tender. Just gonna put that in. basil that I have it's frozen so like once I see it getting a little brown I pop it in the freezer and I just like it just like shreds you know you could use it as like sprinkled fresh basil now this hand still has the garlic on it I'm gonna be sticking my hand in this meatball mixture to mix it um I found a way to preserve my herbs because I grow so many throughout the summer and I love freezing fresh basil because this gets brown in your refrigerator or on your counter like two, three days. So as soon as you see it getting that little ting, you just sprinkle it in. That's it. I'm going to mix this up now. You got to get in with your hands. I took my rings off. I de-blinked. And you want to mix this until it just comes together, like literally. I love to use fresh herbs often, and you know, some of them just don't stay well for long. So you need to figure out what to do with them. All right, we're gonna put them in the oven because like I said, I really don't wanna destroy my stove. Although it's gonna be destroyed anyway, but you know, let's just try to control it. Let's just try to control it. Let's check the sausage I got over here. Babe, you know what we need to buy? Oh, we did buy them. These are the tongs that you buy? What? These are the tongs that you buy? Yeah. Okay. So good? I mean, they're literally the size of our body. The I know. I only have these barbecue tongs right now. Oh, I gotta put an egg in my meatball. Thank you, I need two eggs. Babe, I forgot my eggs. Did you crack them in for you? No, I got it, I washed my hands already. There's two eggs in here, guys. You know, I wouldn't have forgot the egg if I wasn't on live, because I would just be casually cooking, watching this new documentary that I started on uh, Hulu. It's about polygamy. Um, this guy has like 54 kids. I'm really into the documentaries right now, but they gotta be real. They can't be fugazi. Like, it's gotta be real footage. I want the real people. I want the, 
I want the voice recordings. I want the text messages. Like I want the real deal stuff. I don't want like where they reenact. No, I'll skip it. Absolutely not. I want the real live shit. Like I got the receipts. Um, what is it called? I'll tell you right now what it's called. So on Netflix, I just watched um, about this girl, like her parents. Well, the, the mother died and the father was still alive. They like didn't kill him. And she actually set up the whole thing. And the whole time she's playing it out, like these people came and they broke in. Yeah, Jennifer. <gasps> Crazy, right? Before that, I watched also like The Quiet On Set. I wish I didn't watch it with all the shit coming out about it. I wish I didn't watch it. They didn't even deserve our ratings. The Hulu thing, let me tell you the Hulu thing because I'm getting too hot and heavy because that shit got me mad. Uh, daughters in a cult. Daughters of a cult or daughters in a cult. Right, let's get our meatballs in and then we'll get our sauce started. So Quiet On Set was, you know, crazy. Like the stuff that they did, which we all plainly saw it. We saw it going on. But then it came out that the producers of the Quiet On Set documentary like bamboozled the people that were on the documentary. So you're making a documentary about exploiting these childhood actors, but you're exploiting them also. Does that make sense? Like they were told something else than what it was. Do, you know, do the research. A simple Google search would give you more information, okay? But, yeah, I don't know. I didn't like that. These are going to go in the oven. And I have my oven on pretty high because you don't want to cook these. You just want to get some color on them, you know? I put the bread in, yes. I put the onions in here too, yes. Um, what else have I been watching? Watched one before that. Oh, Escaping Twin Flames. I'm so into that shit. That, like the polygamy shit. I, that stuff is so interesting to me. Like, obviously it's terrible, but I, I find that stuff very intriguing. Like, it's just such a, this whole world that goes on that nobody even knows about. The bread mixture was just leftover bread soaked in some sort of dairy. I used heavy cream and milk. Twin Flames was, it was like a four part episode. Babe, can you put Moki outside? I think she wants to go out. Thank you. Mocha. Wanna go out, girl? Come on. This is 1.44 pounds. That's what the package said. Beef, pork, and veal mixture. I will um, do the recipe. Like, I'll cut it eventually, but it takes so much time because you have to download the whole live. And TikTok does not make it easy for you to download your own lives. It really doesn't. Like, it's my content. Just let me download it. It's so hard. Sister Wives, yes. I don't know. I wonder if they're going to have another season now because they're all like leaving. The ingredients is this. Um, this bowl has 1.44 pounds of meat, equal parts beef, pork, and veal, fried onions, um, about a handful of garlic, grated cheese, bread soaked in milk, fresh parsley, fresh basil, salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder. Two eggs. Pretty sure that's it. Love after lockup, of course. I just watched the um, sneak peek. They had a sneak peek for the next season. <laughs> you know, when I watch TV lately, like I need something that is just nonsense. Just like I need. It's like the, it's like the car accident that you can't look away. Like that's what I need to watch. I am making uh, macaroni and meatballs. And I also had a sausage over here that I fried up. Inside number nine, I have to check that out. It's nice out, right babe? 
Should have barbecued. I'm just ready for the pool to be open. Like, and I don't even like to swim. I just like have the option of going outside and like something to do every day. Hot dogs for lunch, yeah. I love a good hot dog on the grill. You know, there's really nothing like it. Nothing like a good hot dog on the grill. I like to put baked beans on my hot dog. The weather in Jersey today is beautiful. Sunny, nice and warm. I'm from Queens, New York. I moved to Jersey like six years ago. I mean, I had to throw mine out. This is our sausage that we fried up. Once it cools, I'll cut it and then we'll throw it in the sauce later on with the meatballs. I'm gonna actually separate these a little bit now that I have the room for it. It'll cook quicker if you do that. Constantly washing my hands. Open up the treatment. Love it. Ask me treatment. Read the back. I think it is actually the cocoa nut. <laughs> you know why? It doesn't, it doesn't strike you as a regular nut. Does it? You know? Sunday sauce. So this is the pan that I fried the sausage in. So I got a little bit of like the pork fat in there, some of the olive oil from that. I'm going to take the rest of our fried onions that we started earlier. And a nice chunk of this confit garlic. Babe, they want to know my bodega order. Okay. Depends on the time of the day, honestly. Okay? Bodega order. Bacon, egg, and cheese. Obviously. Bacon. Toasted. Toasted. Either a sesame or a poppy. Sesame or poppy. Ketchup. Lunch. No salt. Lunch. Turkey. No sandwich. pepper. Provolone. Shredded lettuce. It depends, though. I may want the honey turkey with I the know. monster and the honey mustard. I know, but usually. <laughs> Turkey. Other turkey. Probably Honestly, I don't. Lunch. We don't really have like you know bodegas like that around here. Orange drink, if you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't drink that shit. Right, but when I was pregnant, I really loved the Nesquik vanilla milk. Loved that. Remember? Oh my god, a bacon, egg, and cheese with a Nesquik vanilla milk. It was so good. I don't even know why. It probably tastes like chemicals to me now. But then, I loved it. Oh. <laughs> All right, but for real though, um, as far as cold cut sandwiches, um, oven roasted turkey, provolone mayo, shredded lettuce, and tomato on a roll. Or honey turkey, munster, honey mustard, lettuce, tomato on the roll. Those are my two cold cut Sammy, you know, go-tos. You know, you did like a nice roast beef also, but the roast beef had to be rare, like I had to see it. He had to show me it was pink. But I really do prefer the turkey. With Serafina, I didn't eat any like cold cuts or anything. I was like, you know, my first time, I was, you know, first time parent. I did eat mad sushi though. Do I miss the city? I'm still pretty close to the city. So, you know, my fam my my mother still lives in Queens. So I'm still like in and out, but I really have no desire to live there anymore. Really? Because those are better in white I'm gonna pick you up so I can show you what the pot looks like right now. I don't think I can turn you, but 
This is the onion, the garlic, and like that porky oil that we fried up the sausage in. Porky oil, making up names. Pork oil. <laughs> I have to feed my sourdough starter. I really thought I had another job in. Now this ice machine won't stop making ice. Can't stop, won't stop. But now it's going in the back. You can't win. It either makes too much or not enough. So funny you like that. Yeah, the coconut milk. It is 10.15. Gotta get my sauce on. This is actually late to me, honestly. Yeah, water. You know, I need your water. Yeah, she will. I will. Babe, do I have any red wine over there? Red yeah, wine. Um, I moved to Jersey. Well, I left Queens because of Hurricane Sandy. How good of a red wine do you want? Nothing sugary. It's got to be like a... Malbec. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one, huh? It's Malbec or that other really nice wine you got? The that came is, both are, that came is a $100 bottle of wine. So open the Malbec. I'll just have to drink it later. Okay. There you go. Um, I moved to... Staten Island after the hurricane because my house got destroyed. I'm, I'm from Howard Beach, Queens. And then my husband was living on Staten Island. So once my house was destroyed, my husband's like, well, I guess you gotta move here. And we moved in a one bedroom. And then, you know, I lived there for a few years. Then we got married. And then we were going to buy a house and Staten Island was too expensive. Queens was too expensive. Jersey was like, I could get more for my money. Like, yeah, taxes are absolutely trash. But this was also pre-COVID. This was six years ago. So whatever I'm talking about isn't even real life anymore because it's completely different. Um, so, but at the time, you know, financially what, what we could afford was over the bridge. And I'll tell you what, I think it was the best decision we ever made. Cause I, I'm just like happy in Jersey. I don't know. It, it's just more relaxing for me, which probably isn't normal for a regular Jersey person. <laughs> Cause people think Jersey is so like, you know, fast paced, but there are a lot of places in Jersey that are more quiet. Like eventually we'd like to live deeper in Jersey somewhere where it's a little more quiet. I'm putting a can of tomato puree in here. You can use crushed tomato, diced tomato, whatever you got. This is just what I have right now. Yeah. Okay. I should have put my wine first, but that's okay. Um, you know what? I'll deglaze with the wine. Don't do this. I'm gonna put like a quarter cup of wine. Instead of doing the water. Use the cork. What am I doing with the cork? What? What am I doing with the cork? Cork and it would be done. Have some. Oh, I'm not gonna have some right now. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm gonna probably still add like a half a cup of water too. Like that much water. Okay. You wanna bring this up to a simmer? Someone said it's Sunday, enjoy a glass. It's 12 o'clock somewhere, right? This is from, Tom took me to a winery, which I really, really enjoyed it, but it wasn't like close. And I hate, I hate like going far on date nights because I feel like we spend so much time in the car when like, well then I guess you could like quality time in the car too, you know? Wait, you hate the car. I hate the car, thank you. 
I really hate being in the car, so that's not really quality times bed for me. <laughs> um, what was I doing now? My starter. Let's season my sauce first. Salt. So, I'm 34. They asked if I was drinking now. I'm making sauce. Don't you put wine in your sauce? Did you see me pour a glass of wine? Peppa. Where's my basil? Well, Here's my fresh basil. Oh, trust me, no judgment. Me and my husband said, when, you, when you're on vacation, the time zone doesn't matter when you're on vacation. <laughs> Love a good fresh basil in my sauce, okay? And I didn't see if I have any cheese rinds. Check my meatballs. Oh, look great actually. These are um, Parmigiano Reggiano cheese rinds, and you get them in the in the cheese section. Like this whole container was three dollars and eighty four cents. I store it in my freezer, and I I add these to chicken soup sauce. You know anything really that you're you, you're like braising chicken cacciatore anything like that. It just gives it like. You don't eat this, you end up taking it out after. You can eat it if you want, but um, you put, um, it puts like a nice nuttiness. It makes your, your broth like velvety, very, very velvety, and a nice little salt, nice little salt, without adding the salt. I can't explain it. Just buy the cheese rind and try it. I feel like little shit like this will like totally take your meal to the next level and it's something as simple as adding in something that you would normally be throwing out you know what i mean so i'm gonna throw this in i'm only doing one can of sauce it's just us and i really don't want the leftover and i won't i hate freezing sauce that had meat cooked in it i don't know i'm sure it doesn't matter but i don't like the taste of it defrosted with like the old meat it's probably just me That's just my opinion. Oh, I should have saved my can to put my spoon in. Now the, the meatballs that I'm making, I'm gonna freeze half of those. So I'm frying up half of those and then half of them I'm gonna freeze because we don't need all those meatballs tonight for dinner, especially if I'm also doing sausage, but that'll be like a good weeknight. I can even take those out one day and do meatball sandwiches. You know, you don't have to do, you don't have to do macaroni and meatballs. You could do like a meatball palm and make heroes, you know? Time to buy a spoon rest. I know, I actually have a plate over here. I have like a little plate that I've been using as my spoon rest. This is coffee, by the way. If you've been here i made it earlier yeah meatball heroes delicious check out the vow is it like real or is it like a fake reality shit and letting it come to a simmer and then we're gonna cover it and you're gonna cook it really as long as you want but this doesn't have tomato paste in it so you really don't need to cook it all day I do because it tastes it tastes better but if you wanted to make this you know like two hours before dinner you could 
It's better the longer you cook it. But you could, because there's no paste. I am just, I have to feed my starter real quick. So I, am, I like to warm up the water a little bit. It like gets it going quicker. Thank you for the hat. Babe, would you make rice starter and forgot you made rice? Uh, yeah. Wow, what a waste of rice. What a waste of rice. I could. We don't need any more rice. I'm making pasta. Could you do a few cook, eat now, and later recipes? Yeah, I guess I could do that. I mean, that's really with anything. You could cook it early and eat it later. I could try to do something like that. Thank you for the money gun, Erin. Let's feed my sourdough starter. I don't know where all my big jars were. And I did a Walmart order for them to send me the 32 ounce jars, but they didn't send them. Don't you love when you do the order? And then they like, just like, oh, we actually, we didn't have that. And they don't even like give you an option to change it. Because I would have just got like one of them, you know? I didn't need the whole case. Oh, I also have two loaves in the oven that I got to bake. And not the oven, the refrigerator. <laughs> I just got to feed it because you got to keep her alive, you know? But I'm gonna just discard a lot this time. I'm just gonna do like 100 grams. Actually, we'll do like 80 grams because I'm not even gonna need the 100. This I'm gonna save. I'm gonna use more. Ready? This is some discard that I've been saving for recipes and you know, if anything happens with your starter, you could always bring it back to life with discard. I don't save it all the time. I always make sure I have two jars in there full and then after that, honestly, I toss. Once I have the two jars, that's when I'll start making like a discard recipe. Then you could start your new two jars because you want to keep them moving. You don't want them, I mean, I'm sure they could last forever in the fridge. I don't really know. That you're gonna have to do your own research. I've never had it long enough to experience that. And I don't wanna spread false info. But I'll tell you what, this shit makes a mess. Such a mess. Well, we're gonna be here any, any day. I know. I'm sorry. Good thing we got house insurance. <laughs> Good thing we got house insurance. Good thing we got house insurance. Home warranty, whatever the hell that shit's called. Listen, it's all for the sourdough, babe, okay? It's all for the sourdough. And that just gets stored in the fridge. Oh, this is Dollar Tree. I love these. But you know what? You can't put them in the dishwasher because the numbers come off. And then they're useless because you don't know what you're measuring. <laughs> what you gonna do? What you gonna do? All these paper towels, yes, but you know what? I'm still using these paper towels. I have them right here. I'm gonna wipe down my countertop, dry my hands some more. I do use a lot of paper towels though. I won't even try to defend myself there, honestly. But does anybody else like store the cleaner paper towels on the side of their um, sink? And then like when you're done washing dishes, you wipe down the counter with it over there? Or is that just me? I really love paper towels. My husband says I use a lot also, so, you know. Um, see, that's me being resourceful. Yeah. Honestly, if you're going through a roll a day, you should probably buy like, my husband told me that if I buy the cheaper ones, I go through more that we have to get like the Costco ones because they're a little thicker, so I'm not using as many at one time. And I'm like, Costco whatever makes you feel better is cool of me. The Costco, you only need two picked up. Yeah, no, because this, I think this one's a Costco and this one is still good. Obviously, if I'm wiping my hands after 
something dirty, I'm not gonna use it. But if I washed my hands and then I dried my hands with paper towels, I'm storing that on the side of the, on the side of the sink and I'm wiping down my counter with it. What's wrong with it? Just a little water. Yeah, it only touched water. It's still good. Recycling, recycle, reuse, reuse and recycle. <laughs> yeah, the first part of that is reduce. Reduce. I do reduce. Ooh, those meatballs are good. Almost another like two minutes. I'm gonna turn them and try. And then I put some loaves together to have some fresh bread with dinner. Just gotta bake them off. They're getting nice and sour in the fridge right now. I was doing that yesterday. Normally I do this in a mason jar, but my dishwasher's full. I gotta put it on. If I put it on with you guys, it's loud as shit. You're not gonna hear me talking, I'll be screaming over it. And I feel like I already talked pretty loud. <laughs> now we'll say, it's at like a little under one cup now. So obviously like now I could visually see if it grows, but if you're just starting your sourdough journey, thank you, Erin. If you're just starting, really be aware of where your starter is after you mix it because you really can tell a lot by how much it's growing. And if it's like doubling, prefer it to triple. If it's tripling, that means like it's ready to be baked. And you're not gonna have success with, a, with your bread if you're using a weak sourdough starter, you know? I also, you, I mean, if you've been following me, you know, I, it took me like a month to actually keep my starter alive, but I was feeding it whole wheat for like a while. And I think the whole wheat made it stronger. I don't know. And then I started feeding it bread flour. Um, I don't really know what the whole wheat did. I, I feel like it did give it a nice flavor. Is there still whole wheat in there? I don't know because you're discarding, you're feeding, you're discarding. I don't know. You just gotta figure it out and tweak what works for you because even tips that people told me didn't work for me because it really goes by your environment. Like, I don't know exactly how hot your house is. I don't know exactly if you, how you did those stretch and folds, if you timed it properly. Like there's so many things that, you know, go into play. Um, and I really could say a good thermometer will get you very far. A digital one, yeah. I have a Pampa Jeff one. Honestly, I, I'm actually in need of a new one. I loved this one, but it's just older, and I, you know, it's time for a new one. This one also came with a, like a string that goes in that you can put in your meat and um, like watch what the temp is at the time. Um, but I think I broke that part. My cabinet's open. My, there's, there's my mother. My cabinet's always open. It's always open. My meatballs are done. I'm gonna take them out. I'll show you them. And then I'll get one of my Dutch ovens nice and hot. So here's our pot cooked meatballs. So tender. You wanna let them cool a little bit before you handle them. And if you are gonna freeze half of these, make sure you let them cool completely before you freeze them. Like, I'm not gonna freeze these till like later on tonight, you know? Um, but I'll probably put like, probably like this many in the sauce. I also like some people, they say they want that fat in their sauce. That's why I did the sausage to give it a little extra flavor, but that is a lot of fat and that's how much you're getting when you're frying the meatballs. And I feel like I use enough olive oil anyway. So I'll let this chill a little bit. Okay, 
keep this pan out because I'll use this for my vegetables later. This onion pan. What time is it, babe? I don't have my phone. Fina, what time is it? Check your eyes. Oh, okay. We're, we're running good on time right now. My daughter has a birthday party today. How does it work in your household? Like, if you, you know, have your husband home and you have two kids and one of them has a birthday party, do you both go as, like, a family? Do you do, like, family birthday parties? Or do you, like, all right, you go this time, babe. I'll go next time. You switch off. Switch off. Like... I feel like that is such a good way for you to get your little break in, even though I have another kid here who drives me crazier than the older one. But still, do I want to take that craziness to the birthday party? No. You switch off, you know? And my husband's cool with that. Like, he literally talks to people for a living, so he's just like, whatever, he doesn't care. I'm going to put my Dutch oven in the oven to heat up because I want to get one of my breads going. Everyone switches off, babe. Yeah, that's what we do. No, we're not having any more kids. No more kids. I'm just raising these two beautiful little ladies. Did you bring extra people that the person didn't pay for? Yeah, I know. Well, Marielle can't really do anything. But they do. That does work in the play. Like, how do you, you know, but I never, I always feel like also like maybe that person didn't have help with the other kids. So they had to bring the kid. Like, I was always like, whatever for that. Let them all have fun. Yeah. Divide and conquer. Yes, exactly. The onion cheese bread I already posted. I didn't make that today. I made that a couple of days ago. And I gave half of that to my mother-in-law. Then I froze some of the olive bread for my mother. My mom's coming here one of these weekends. It's her birthday soon. A couple of days, it's my mom's birthday. Um, I'm taking her out to eat. And she's also babysitting my kids one day. So when, when my mom watches my kids, we have to like set up a whole weekend. Because she doesn't live that close. So she has to drive here. She sleeps over. Fina like, thinks she's having a sleepover. It's cute. I have an older sister. I'm gonna put this in the oven. Let's see what my bread's looking like. This is one that I made yesterday. It's proofing, this one's beautiful. Now this is, um, I'm gonna show you the other one. Same exact recipe, I did it exactly the same, but it doesn't look like it rose as much, but I think I know why. I'm thinking it's just placement in the basket because see, it does like look just as big. This basket, these things get disgusting. The, the little linen things that go in these baskets. So I put them in the washing machine, like two or three times I put them in the washing machine. But the thing is they're so tiny that I can't find them after they're washed. <laughs> so last night I put these two things together, I take the basket out and I'm like, oh shit, I forgot that one was missing. So I just use parchment, you know? Maybe it'll look a little weird in shape, but I'm cool with that. I actually may enjoy it. Um, this is just regular sandwich bread. So um, I made two loaves last week. I, I usually make two loaves a week and that's just like a bread in the house. Fina still has some white bread in the freezer, so I've been using that for her. But last week I did them in a loaf pan, and I do like the texture. Easier to cut in the loaf pan, but I do like the texture better in the bannetons. Cooked in like the Dutch oven, you know? So I'm gonna keep those in the fridge. I'm gonna set my timer for an hour, because I want my pan to get preheated. And then um, I'm going to do the six-minute score that I saw on Basil and Sourdough, I think his name is. Basil and Sourdough Co. He has really cool tips. I really enjoy his page. And um, he does this, like, six-minute, seven-minute score or something. I tried it once, and it did, it did work out nice. But also, I do need a better um, knife. I, I had a Sourdough score. What's it called? The blade. 
And honestly, it was flimsy as shit. So I threw it out. Oh, the microwave is my timer. <laughs> I put my 60 minute timer on. Oh, my espresso. I got my coffee here. Yeah. Multi-tactile goes off for anything and everything. So, I have three or four serrated knives. None of them are good enough. I just, I actually just bought myself. I'm waiting for Amazon. I bought one of the bread bows. It's like a hands all and it's a bow. Looks like a bow and arrow almost. I bought one of those. I'm hoping that's, um, yeah, bread. Well, the bread lamb, that's the blade, right? I haven't found one that I loved for that yet. Um, I did buy the bread knife, waiting for that. I did see someone tag me in like a loaf that you turn, you crank, it's like this whole contraption, but I already have a huge juicer, and I think that's enough huge contraptions for my counter. Like, I mean, I really would probably get so much use out of that too, but let's see how this other knife is that I got already. Thank you, Clyde, for the roses. Why is she always yelling? I'm just talking regular. See, this is like my whole life. People are like, you're so loud, you're so loud. It's literally just me. So maybe just put your volume a little lower. <laughs> Thank you for the dinosaurs. Thank you for the roses. Literally just me. And this is me talking a little quiet. Garden prep. So yesterday, my husband actually did some tilling, right, babe? What did you till, babe? Babe. What? What did you do yesterday in the garden? I did the flower box. Oh, yeah. I got a garden bed. I bought a garden bed from the, from, from the TikTok shop, okay? And it's this big basin. I'll show you guys. And I was like, I only bought one because I'm like, let me see how big it is and if it fits. So if you saw my my video i said i was gonna build a garden bed one on each side and i was gonna do like two of each plant in there but this garden bed is like narrow and long perfectly that i could fit four up there so i'm thinking about buying another three put two on each side and then do like one bed peppers different assorted peppers one bed tomatoes different assorted tomatoes and honestly they're all gonna grow and mesh together anyway and i'm gonna end up putting stakes and tying branches everywhere like if you go to my garden and content from last year you basically are like sowing the branches throughout the summer i like have these little cages that you put places for the branches to tie to because every year your plants are growing differently you know and every year i'm learning more i i don't know what the hell i'm doing I'm just guessing and checking every year. Like, what worked for me last year? What didn't work for me last year? I don't know shit. My eggplants did terrible last year. I think I got, like, maybe five or six eggplants. And they were tiny. So I need to re... I'm going to move my eggplants. I'm not going to put any plants up there by my deck. I think there was too much sun there. So I'm going to move them. And, babe, I really... You know the wood you bought for the beds? Do that for me. That's what I want. And then I have, a, like, a space on the other side of my house that's kind of, like, useless space. So I'm going to try to make, like, a little zucchini, like a little zucchini garden over there because it's also next to the fence. So hopefully it'll climb the fence nicely and do, like, a sorted squash. My zucchini never did good in my year either. One, the pumpkin. One year we planted something. I bought this plant in Queens on Jamaica Avenue. It's, it was labeled as the Kakuza. Like, it was supposed to be Gagoots. It was not cagoots, okay? I actually can show a picture to you guys. Maybe I could show you on my iPad. This was, me and Tom did the research. It was an opal squ opa squash. It was like a Japanese or some sort of Asian squash. And um, it was huge. It was like this big. And it just kept growing and growing and growing. I don't really have many pictures on here. It's probably on my Google. It's probably on my Google Photos. 
I did bad in zucchini flowers once on here. Yeah, I do them every year because they only come like a certain amount of times. But what time is it right now? I'm gonna hop off now, get some shit done around here, and take my kids in the yard for a little bit. Okay, Serafina has a birthday party, so I gotta prepare for that, which I'm probably gonna have my hubby go to this one, so I can get some shit done around here. Uh, but I will definitely be on later. And we're gonna make our pasta together. I don't know what side dish I'm doing yet, but we're gonna make something. Um, and I'm also gonna make like this really good fruit salad, but I may do that for cocktail. I mean, for content. <laughs> What's on your mind? <laughs> <laughs> I swear the days, the days just roll into each other. Let's do a recap of what I did though, if you're just joining me, okay, for meatballs. Um, I used, it was a pound, 1.44 pounds of meat. It was beef, pork, and veal, all right? So equal parts of that. But like I've said, you know, in this live, you could do just beef. You could do beef and pork. Sometimes I'll do that. Like, whatever is accessible for you. I don't always do the three meat mixture. If it's in the store, I buy it, you know? Um, fried onions, garlic. I use the confit garlic. If you're not using confit garlic, just chop up your onion, chop up your garlic and fry it with your onion so it gets nice and tender as well. And then I use... A handful of bread soaked in milk or cream, whatever dairy is good for you. You know, almond milk, if you have to, I would not recommend it, honestly. But if you have to. <laughs> uh, grated cheese, fresh parsley, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper, two eggs. I think I covered it all. Fresh basil. And that's it. I DM'd you a starter warmer for your sourdough. Thanks, babe. But I don't even think I need the warmer anymore because it's starting to get, like, nicer here. So mine's just thriving on the counter right now as is. I think it was just too cold in my house at the time, you know? Thank you for the gifts, guys. Canned oysters? Yes, I, I, I put them on toast. Butter your toast. Oyster. Uh, microgreens. Some, like, chopped up jalapenos. Crushed red pepper, of course. Love you guys. I'll see you later. We'll have pasta together. Well, I'm probably not going to eat with you because we'll do family dinner. But we'll prepare. We'll plate up. And I don't know what my vegetables situation is like. Probably a salad. I like a nice salad with, like, spaghetti and meatballs, you know? I picked up romaine just for that. It's got to be romaine. Love you guys.